Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and well, this is a really, really special lock, certainly very rare over here in the UK. It's a Yale Bicentric Mortis Screwing Cylinder. Bicentric because it's got two keys which um, operate two cores, and they're not independent of each other. If you look at the back, you can see some gearing here by which one key would turn, but the core wouldn't be able to turn very much without the other core turning and then when they both turn clearly these two tail pieces here these cams will be able to turn and they'll open whatever lock it is um, protecting probably some safe deposit box or something like that I'm not actually entirely sure when you'd use a dual custody lock like this screw and mortise cylinder I'm, I'm guessing some kind of um, you know small uh, storage vault or something like that um, but it's really really awesome now I've been wanting one of these for quite some time this was kindly sent to me by the legal lock picker. Please do go check out his channel. Some amazing content out over there. Um, sadly, this doesn't come with keys, uh, but it's a fabulous lock nonetheless. And I've already contacted a very well-known and respected member of the lock sport community who might be able to help me source some keys for this. Anyway, um, isn't it just a wonderful object, full stop? I mean, I really love this. Just the gearing at the back in particular, just something about it. Picking it, um, well, I think we need to grab a vise, uh, have a go at picking it, and then seeing how on earth we can get inside this to see what's on the inside of it. Right, let me go grab that vise. So here we are, and we're in a much smaller vise than you'd expect. That I don't have my normal Pan Advice 350 because the back has two cams attached to it, and, um, well, if I had my wider drawers clamp uh, or vice, then those would interfere with the drawers and it wouldn't open. And that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't be able to pick a lock uh, that's featured in my 10 reasons why you can't pick a lock video. Uh, the tail pieces of these mortise cylinders or rim cylinders catching on the drawers of the vice you're using still happens to me today. A bit embarrassing, but it does happen. When that legal lock picker picked this, he actually raked it, which is uh, very skillful of him. Um, you know my channel though, I do like to try and SPP these things, so I've got the Yale logo at the full horizontal on here, so I'm going to try and pick at this angle. The keyways are about 30 degrees. You notice the pry bar I'm using is 2 millimeters thick. This is a hooligan bar from Law Lock Tools. The keyway itself is slightly paracentric, so I'm going to be using a 18 thousandth Peterson gem as well, so between all of that, I should be able to uh, navigate the keyway and get an open. So. Start with the top one, pin one, quite a lot of movement there. Sorry, pin five, sorry, starts at the back, didn't I? Pin five again, more movement, interesting. Nothing on four, three, two, one, okay, back to the back. Five again. Three. That's two. Okay, back to the back again. That's four now. That's five. Three, two, one. Something's still not quite open, is it? Four. Is that cancer rotation? Don't think so. Three, and we're open. Okay, good. So I don't want to overturn it, but you can see how uh, one of yeah that that cam the cams are moving actually. Uh, to, well, let's, let's have a look. If I just do that, here we go. They're, they're like little um, hands of a clock. Can you see? Interesting, isn't it? Fantastic mechanism. But we haven't got this open yet. We need to open it from the bottom. So I'm uh, going to put this thick pry bar, pry, pry, bar, pry, bar, pry, bar, pry bar at the top. Turn it that way a bit for you. Should give you a better angle to view the picking and have a go. Pin one, it's binding. The bottom one seems to have more par uh, a tighter keyway. It's harder to pick as well, which is odd because it's actually uh, my preferred way up, which is pin two. Um, 
We got one, two, good. Uh, three. Still on two. Good, got that. If the other pins don't feel like they're binding, you probably haven't picked the pin properly. That's a four, three. Right to the back, pin five, I think. Oh, it's a, these are six pin locks. I've been miscounting all that time. I thought there were five pins. Probably don't have the key, isn't it? It's been out by one pin each time. That's five, four, three, two, one. Back to six now. But it's five that needs picking. Four, three, two, one. Must is it six now? Yes, it is, and we are open. Look at that. So I'll move them both to the um, roughly the horizontal. Now, let's try to go on to the um, gutting of this. And I'll, we'll need a pinning tray. But I won't just need a pinning tray, I'll need some other equipment here, which is actually quite interesting. So, a while back, uh, the cores are not a standard size. They're not the uh, 12 and a half millimeters or 10 millimeters. They're a non-standard size. Now I actually took a selfie stick. I think it's the only decent thing you can do with a selfie stick. And I made a video on this and I cut it down into a concentric set of followers. Very, very, like, like really useful. Um, why am I saying that? Well, it's because you get odd sizes that work in standard locks as well as uh, non-standard size locks. So I found one which actually fits these two um, cores, which is really, really nice. So let's just whiz these screws out. If I remember, I'll try and record me putting this lock back together for my side channel, side noob. Because um, it's always interesting seeing such a an unusual lock being put back together. Or at least I think it is. You, you, rarely, you rarely see it. Up oh, there's a little tailpiece. Um, I don't know what this little bit's for, but it nestles inside here, like that. Um, the other way up, I think. There you go, uh, like that. And that's obviously where it screws in, but I don't know why it has to be two pieces. Maybe it's just to uh, take the small tail piece there, I don't know. But it, it is an interesting little mechanism. Then the gear comes out like that. Isn't that cool? Really like that. Okay. Um, put that there. Then we've got that little tail here. Oh, hold on to that. Don't want to relock the lock up. Where are you? There we go, come here. So those are smaller screws there. Then we can take this little one out. Just look at that, isn't that cute? So nice. A little um, cog or sprocket or whatever you want to call it. And um, now we get to play around with this. So, my, here rattle a bit that's because of the key pins in there trying to remember where the uh the pin chambers are and they are da -da -da, around here so gotta be careful when we gut this so if i put this piece on here like that and gently align it with that like that and then I think that's the right size. Yes, we are okay. I just need to make sure that we have the pins at the top and then push gently out.
Okay, that's core number one. Uh, let's gut this out. and then gently get all of the driver pins out. getting all the springs out. They seem to be a range of different sizes. Some steel, some copper or brass. Possibly by looking at that, that could be on purpose, an anti-bump feature, different properties of the different springs. They uh, react differently to being bumped. So it could be, an anti-bump feature could just be a refurb job. And again, this just align this and push through, making sure I've got the pin chains at the top. There we go. And this is the second core. So this is the one at the, the bottom with a longer tail piece on here. So again, we'll try our best to do that on top here. Oh, managed to do pin one and six at the same time, which is a, a great skill, I think you'll agree, and certainly not a mistake. Right, here you go. Okay, mm, some of these key pins look a little bit like driver pins, actually, in this side. Let's just move these down a bit. And then we'll go for this one. Oh. So far, all these driver pins are standards. And there we go. And um, I might leave those springs in just because they all look about the same to me. Okay, so let's have a bit of an explore of these pins together. I'll move this up and I'll get some focus on for you. So, um, this is really odd. Let me try and get a bit more light to focus in on there. This is really odd uh, for me because, you know, it's 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 really strange. I, I At least I find we've got these, um, some of these key pins here are really, I mean, look at this one. I mean, what's, what's going on with that? It, it's, it's, it's not, I don't even think it's a real key pin. It looks like a cut down driver pin. Uh, this is on the top one. This is very gnarled. Uh, this one looks like a cut down driver pin as well. It looks like it may have been refurbed at some point to to something, I don't know what, but these key pins are really strange. All standard driver pins. Would expect in a Yale to have, um, yeah, maybe some spools in there. It certainly made this a lot harder to pick. 
these key pins here look okay apart from key pin three this is at the this is the the bottom uh core and again pin key pin five here looks like this like a, a driver pin all the driver pins are standard i would say this is probably a refurbished lock um if i ever find key blanks for this i, m I might considering that it's a refurb actually use a, a, a pin a pinning kit and choose some standard Yale size pins to to put into this and maybe uh, I might keep the the driver pins the same I, I'm maybe assuming too much but these might be originals um but yeah some of these key pins are very very odd uh I'll, I'll just show you up close to the two examples of how they're a little bit strange uh look at this and this something's really odd about that that doesn't look like a key pin really does it and and this certainly not either um plus i think that's steel i don't think it's even brass so i don't really know what's going on inside this it, i think it must be a refurbished job um or something I, I don't know it's history but nevertheless it's a it's a strange one that's for sure but a, a superb lock and just a really really fun object and uh, certainly a brilliant lock for the collection well i hope you enjoy that video uh it's a bit of a strange set of internals but the whole thing itself is really really brilliant well i hope you enjoyed that if you like the video please leave a like i really appreciate um, all the comments i read them all and i reply to as many as i can and if you haven't subscribed please do consider subscribing uh, i might actually now put this lock back together and stick the um <laughs> it's it's reassembly on my side channel side noob and i'll leave a link below for you to follow okay I'll see you all next time